I'm in one of about 30 parking lots in Marsden Park, just 50 kilometres northwest of Sydney's CBD. Ten years ago, this used to be farmland, green to grey. And looking around, you don't see many trees, making spaces like this really good at trapping heat. In summer, light-coloured, unshaded concrete can be 60 degrees, while unshaded asphalt can get as hot as 75 degrees. And parking lots like these are just one reason why this part of the city is so much hotter than the rest. Right now we're driving through what's called an urban heat island. That's where the temperatures are much hotter than country areas because of how the land's been modified. When you replace bushland with buildings, you lose those porous surfaces that take up rainwater, evaporate it and generate a cooling effect. It's usually hotter here than it is in the city by an average of four degrees over the past 30 years. In this part of the city, the culprit is hot air from the desert. Sydney is on the coast, but it's located close to one of the largest desert areas in the world. The inland desert is a cradle of strong hot winds and a massive heat source. The cool air from the ocean reaches about as far as Parramatta. Everywhere beyond that feels the blast of hot air from the desert to the west. That's not just in Sydney. Adelaide and Melbourne experience a similar effect. So the further cities expand away from the coast, the hotter they become. To complicate things further, the CBD acts like a heat dome. The high density of concrete and asphalt stops the sea breeze in its tracks, blocking the cooler air from reaching the suburbs that are directly west of the CBD. So the outer suburbs are hotter because of their location, but there are some things that make the heat worse. Asphalt and concrete are major culprits, and they're everywhere. They absorb solar radiation from the sun during the day, convert it into thermal energy, and release it back out as heat. Because darker materials generally absorb more light, they also emit more heat. Black material is the ultimate light absorber. It absorbs all light on the visual spectrum, converting it into heat so it becomes warm. But when you look at anything white, you're seeing all visible light hitting the object's surface and reflecting back, meaning the temperature doesn't increase much. I'm meeting up with Sebastian Fouch from Western Sydney University, who's spent the past decade studying urban heat in Western Sydney. So what makes an area like this hotter than other areas? So you can see already in this area, we have lots of hard infrastructure. Just have a look at uh, your, your side here. You find that natural turf has been replaced with plastic, with um, synthetic grass, which is really hot. Um, we see that driveways get painted dark. It's very fashionable at the moment. Um, that, of course, leads to a higher surface temperature. And then you see things happening where you have a front yard, but you don't have a tree anymore. Or you have a front yard that is replaced with pebbles. Let's zoom out a little. Using near-map analysis of aerial imagery, you can see heat vulnerability across the city. In other words, areas that are more exposed to increasing urban heat. As it turns out, heat inequality goes hand in hand with wealth inequality. This shows how wealth is distributed in Sydney. Blue is the wealthiest. Notice the average income for Palm Beach in Sydney's north was $141,000. Red shows the least wealthy. The average income in Emu Plains, a suburb of Penrith, was less than half of that at $59,000. Let's put those two maps side by side. Look familiar? On any bright sunny day in summer, areas around here are at least four degrees hotter than the coastal north. We met up with Anoop who lives in Sydney's northwest. It's so hot here and so overdeveloped that Anoop is thinking about moving somewhere with more trees. Last time, last summer, we had temperatures of 48, 49 on this road. I never had issues of anxiety and depression. Heat has got me into anxiety and depression. Heat effects, where do I go? Where do I walk? Come, come in, have a look inside the house. While his home has air conditioning, it's too expensive to run all summer. To save on energy, the whole family gathers in one room. Currently, we are three generations and five members. We stay together, 
eat together, make, make it so that we help each other to go past that issues of the heat affecting you mentally, psychologically. For the most vulnerable, heat can be deadly. Prolonged heat exposure increases the number of people being hospitalised and increases the number of ambulances being called out. Really everyone is vulnerable to heat waves, particularly babies, young children, pregnant women, the elderly, those with chronic diseases. In terms of natural disasters, it's Australia's biggest killer, taking more lives over the past 100 years than floods and fires combined. In 2009, 374 people died across metropolitan Melbourne in one heatwave, more than Victoria's annual road toll. So it is underestimated. You have people who are not cognizant, who are older, um, who might not feel that they are getting dehydrated. People living in warmer areas of Western Sydney have a 6% higher risk of heat-related death than those living in East Sydney. And those numbers could get a whole lot worse. Climate change has warmed Australia by about 1.5 degrees since the early 1900s. Even if global 2030 targets are met, it'll warm up by about another 2 degrees by 2100, meaning that heat is going to get a whole lot worse. So, what can we do about it? Apart from missing out on the cool coastal breeze, one of the contributors to excess heat is tree coverage. Plants are what connects this map of heat with this map of wealth inequality. Marsden Park, a middle-income suburb, has 1% tree coverage, while very wealthy parts in the north have more than 60%. Across Sydney, the average is about 26%. The government plans to plant one million trees across the country by 2022, but they take time to mature. The most obvious benefit from trees is that they provide shade and that lowers surface temperatures. But something we don't see is a process called evapotranspiration. That's when trees release water vapour into the atmosphere, which in turn cools the air. Why are trees important uh, when we're talking about heat? They shade the surface and they also evaporate water, which cools down air temperature. We see, particularly in these new master plant communities, very, very little tree cover. It's all concentrated in the streets. Of course, everything is so close together, the tree cannot grow up and develop a canopy. And that's what we're seeing around here. You find lots of very young trees, very small trees. Um, they're great in 20 years, but in 20 years, we already had 20 years of summers with heat waves. Now, I don't want you to think this is just a Sydney problem. In fact, Melbourne is the greyest city in all of Australia with just 23% total tree cover. Take a look at the new suburbs like Tarnit and Mernda that have replaced farmland on Melbourne's outskirts. There are nowhere near enough new trees to replace a fraction of the lost green cover. Perth is only slightly better with 27% tree coverage. Hobart and Canberra were the only two cities that had more green cover in 2020 than in 2013. So choose the right tree, make sure it's got water, all that's left, where to put it. You'll notice most of the houses in the new suburb of Marsden Park take up most of the block. That leaves little room to plant a large tree. One of the biggest problems uh, that we see is that you build massive houses on very small blocks. There's just very little land left to provide any cooling, any green infrastructure, anything like a backyard. The space between homes becomes very, very small. You might sometimes end up with a meter from one wall to the next and the eaves of houses come so close together that they're only half a meter apart. Hot air will just pool in these areas. The average plot size in metropolitan areas around Australia has dropped significantly from about 600 square metres in 2005 to 460 in 2020. Plots in Sydney shrank the most by about 32% since 2005. But the average floor area has stayed relatively consistent, going from 234 square metres to 248 within a 15 year period. So the priority is building a big house, not a big garden. Those new suburbs on the outskirts of Australia's cities also have something else in common.
This is the colour that's synonymous with Australian suburbia. Unfortunately, dark roof tiles don't protect homes from heat. Like asphalt and concrete, they're very good at absorbing heat and releasing it at night. Ditching dark roofs altogether could cause temperatures in all of Sydney to drop by up to 2.4 degrees. A light coloured roof could reduce temperatures inside by up to 4 degrees on average and 10 degrees during a heatwave. Another solution that's being trialled is pretty simple, paint. Painting this stuff on black asphalt can reduce surrounding temperatures by more than 4 degrees. It's a reflective surface sealant that prevents materials from absorbing heat. And it's being used all over the world in places like Saudi Arabia, Los Angeles and now here. About 15,000 square metres of road and car park surfaces were coated with the stuff. Compared to uncoated surfaces, temperatures were an average of 6 degrees lower. But it's no silver bullet. So we're standing on a road that's been coated with cool seal. Is that an effective way to deal with the heat problem? It is and it is not, as most of the things have two sides. It does help to cool surface temperature down, so it does have an effect on the surface heat island effect. We weren't able to really establish that the streets that you can see here helped um, to cool down ambient air temperature, which of course is the one parameter that really affects human thermal comfort. We have to apply uh, these kind of technologies at a very large scale to see effect. There's still a lot of grey infrastructure that covers much of the city. Councils and governments aren't likely to rip out roads and footpaths anytime soon, and building codes are notoriously complex. So putting it all together, you know, trees, paint, tiles, what's the best solution? Start with the trees, but that means you also need to address the houses to provide the space. So it's, 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 it's interlinked. It's not that easy that you could just put one aspect forward or one mitigation strategy forward. You really need to look at it holistically. And that means we're looking at colours, materials, we're looking at even road surfaces. There are lots of options to address heat, but they need to be looked at holistically. As our cities continue to expand, our outer suburbs shouldn't be pushed to the edge.